These are the skinny bitch golden rules to being a skinny legend. Don't slip up, bitch. The word skinny and thin mean different things to different people. Some people find it as a compliment and other people don't. So in the context of this video, the word skinny has a more positive connotation. And the term mentally skinny refers to having a disciplined mindset when it comes to diet and exercise. Okay, so the first step to being mentally skinny is by identifying your patterns. What are your triggers with food? What makes you crack? How long do you go before you slip up on your diet? What are your personal saboteurs? For me, I sometimes self-sabotage myself by taking too much indica edibles and it makes me want to binge eat. So identify your personal saboteurs. When you identify your patterns and your cycle, we all have a cycle, the sooner you can work around them. So it's so much more easier to be skinny when you're busy, when you have things to do, when you are just go, 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 go. But what happens to when you're at home you got nothing to do with the chill day. You're more likely to casually graze. So by having hobbies that give you a sense of accomplishment and finding other ways to get your dopamine hit instead of the cake, you're gonna be a lot happier. It's a mindset, it really is a mindset. I am a ex-fat kid. I would say I am mentally skinny for sure now because I've implemented these habits, but I don't always wanna be eating like a skinny person. No, I don't. So, and there's some times where I am overeating and I just don't even wanna stop myself because I don't care. You're not a robot either, so you're gonna have these times. And to people who make their livings off personal magnetisms, people have to be on camera to make their money. Beauty and weight, it affects them so much more largely than the average person. You're not living like the average person, so therefore you can't be eating like the average person as well. People who make their money off of personal magnetism typically tend to have eating disorders or disordered eating patterns because their beauty and their weight is their currency. So this is why self-awareness is important because you don't wanna be the girl who develops an ED. Oh my god, my eyeball. <sighs> oh, boo. got me emotional. You don't want to be that girl. Food should be celebrated and not feared. You don't want to have a relationship with food where you're getting so much anxiety because you ate too much, the carbs. Yeah, it's great to be self-aware. Like, I'm aware of what I'm putting in my body. I am aware of the calories, but I don't necessarily count calories because it's not a healthy mindset to have, in my personal opinion. I think about it more as I'm spending calories. What are we spending our calories on today? That's more healthier in my mind, but just the over fixation on food and diet is really, it's giving ED. You really gotta give yourself grace. For me in particular, especially making this content, you think, I don't think, oh my God, I can't get on here being inflamed and bloated. But then that would be me feeling guilty after eating food. And that's not the vibe for me. Give yourself grace. You have to give yourself a little bit more self-compassion than the average person because you're not living an average lifestyle. So if you're cracking and you're eating your food, okay. Oh okay, yeah, okay. You ate some, you ate the bag of Takis. You had the Cheeto. Okay, just go for a walk the next day. We're lessening your reactions to your urges. So yeah, you really, really want that popcorn. Yeah, you you can't stop thinking about it. And you feel like if you didn't get the popcorn, then you're gonna be unsatisfied and you keep thinking about it. Yeah, we know it's there, but you don't have to harp on it. The more you harp on it, it's not really helping your situation. The way to stop thinking about something is by thinking about another thing. You can't think about not thinking about it. It's only gonna make you think about it more. So you have to lessen your reactions to your urges and your cravings. Think about blue skies and green grass, purple lemons and pink elephants. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you be mentally skinny. Also, do you have any where you're going in a couple of days? Do you have any events you need to be snatched for? Do you have anyone that you would like to impress? 
these are the questions you need to be asking yourself when you're picking up that donut. These are the questions you need to ask yourself when you go into 7-Eleven and you're looking at all your snacks. What are we doing this week? Do we gotta look cute? Are we not being seen? If you're not being seen, enjoy your donut. Enjoy your donut. If you've gotta be on camera and you've gotta do these things, let's put it down. Let's put it down. Let's get some uh, something to fill us up. And let's go for the healthier option because in the long term, you're just gonna feel better. I pretty much eat healthy all year round simply because it's just it's how my body feels the best. And pretty much all year, I am maintaining my looks, maintaining my beauty, my diet, my exercise. And it really only isn't until the holidays I allow myself to fluff up a little bit and get a little fatter. I mean, because everyone else is, so I allow myself a little leeway. But also, I lived in the major cities, New York, LA, Chicago. And in the major cities, you've gotta look good all year round. In Miami, there's no hiding season essentially. So you can see the kind of pressure that's on most people living in these cities. There are way more jobs relying on influence rather than physical labor. It's basically like an unspoken rule. You gotta look good if you wanna thrive in these cities. You don't want to be that girl that comes to LA, she, you're fat and you get discriminated against. You don't want that to happen to you. Navigating these societal pressures, it's going to all boil down to the healthy habits that you create for yourself to keep you on track. Because we all eat the whole bag. We all lose the control. We all crack. We all eat the whole box of pizza by ourselves. Don't lie, you've done it. We all emotionally eat to cope. So in the midst of life happening, depression hits you. Your habits is what's going to save you. When you're cracking, you'll still be skinny. You on a bloated day is, okay, me on a bloated day is so many people on a skinny day. I'll come on here bloated and y'all be like, being mentally skinny, it's really more a lifestyle change than anything. It's not being this perfect robot who's not gonna have the whole bag. It's not being this perfect robot who's not gonna slip up. It's about understanding that you are human and you are going to eat some more sometimes and you're gonna eat less sometimes. And to me, respecting your body is respecting it enough to know when it needs more nourishment. When your body needs more nourishment, fuel it, give it more food. And when you've overeaten, respect your body enough to stop eating let your digestive system rest overeating is really never worth it because the next day you just wake up and you're just feeling like a slug for hours your day essentially doesn't start until you have a bowel movement which is hours after you've woken up so that's a waste a day compared to eating light the night before and waking up full of energy and having mental clarity. So while overeating is never really the answer, you've also got to do it every now and then to remind yourself why you shouldn't be doing it. Let's be real here. <laughs> That's what being mentally skinny is about. It's a lifestyle change. It's saying bye to restrictive diets and hell out to new healthy habits that nourish your soul and your body. So it's very triggering to watch someone have a discipline when it comes to health and fitness. If you're someone who's watching this and you're more disciplined on your diet, your body looks the way you want it to look, literally you existing, you eating a salad is triggering for other people. It's like when I I come on TikTok and I have a plate of food, I take a bite and then I don't finish the rest. All the ED girls get triggered in the comments. Think about how you feel when you're looking back at your IG pictures from 20 whatever and you're looking at your Miami pics, you're looking skinny, you're looking hot. You're looking at that photo and you're like, damn, like I gotta get back to the gym. I gotta get myself looking like that again. Now let's take yourself out of it. Imagine a girl or boy who doesn't look like you. They're walking down the street. They see you when you're looking like that. What are they thinking? Oh my God, I gotta go to the gym. I don't look like that. 
how does she look like that? When you look really good, you're giving people permission to hate you. When something's out of reach, the quickest way people can accept themselves is by putting you down. Oh, well, I'll never look like that, so something must be wrong with him. Something must be wrong with her. A lot of people will do this. They'll want something and they'll put that manifestation out there and as quick as they put it out there they kill their own desire with their doubt so it's the same thing they do to you essentially it's like when i moved to manhattan in 2020 and i was seeing all the size twos and the lululemons and the aloe yogas i was like oh my god i cannot live here and be fat oh hell no who wants to be fat around all these skinny wealthy people no you don't want to be that girl so it is the economics of thinness if you really think about it economics of thinness there's an inverse relationship between bmi and income in the united states that is the richer people are the thinner they are but if we break things down by gender we see that the line for women slopes down very sharply and the line for men is flat or maybe even positive women who are 25 pounds overweight make sixteen thousand dollars less a year than average sized women Men who are 25 pounds overweight earn $8,000 more than average sized men. And these estimates for women might understate reality because it's hard to estimate the wage gap for someone who wasn't even offered the job in the first place because of size-based discrimination. Now, historically, explanations of the relationship between BMI and income have focused on the reverse causal arrow, suggesting that it's not weight that affects income, but income that affects weight. Like... Poor people struggle to afford healthy food. They have less time to exercise, but that doesn't explain the gender gap. In fact, the causal effect of weight on income for women in particular has been demonstrated in academic research. For example, Swedish researchers sent in fictitious job applications to real job postings. They manipulated the size of the applicant and their headshots, and they found that larger applicants received fewer callbacks. In fact, women might find it as economically valuable to lose weight as to gain additional education. The wage premium from getting a master's degree is 18%. Not much more than the premium a woman would obtain from losing 65 pounds. Jennifer Chanel, a law professor at Vanderbilt, found that not only are thin women more successful in the labor market, but they're more likely to marry men who are more successful in the labor market. According to some surveys, girls as young as six recognize the expectation that they should be thin. And then we act surprised when we see women over-exercising or restricting their diets. And I think many people often assume it's vanity. But no, our economic system punishes women in the first place and then doubly punishes them when they don't conform to very specific, very rigid standards of beauty. It makes sense as to why you guys are obsessed. So give yourself a little grace. Women can make more money by losing weight versus attaining higher education. It's that deep, y'all. So give yourself grace. I understand why you're watching this content. Another important thing to note is after people make their money, they stop giving up. These ex models that you see them getting fat, letting it go, some of them stay in shape and look good for the rest of their lives because it's just been a programmed habit and it's kind of an unspoken rule because they're being policed even into their older age. Like social media crucifies women for aging naturally. Look at Sarah Jessica Parker, they're letting her have it. Don't do a facelift, Botox. I missed out on the facelift you that you so have good. when you're like. 44. I see 44 as being the prime time for a facelift. As a 42 year old, I'm going to have to ixnay that. But in this day and age, surely. Well, here's <laughs> the thing, too, is that kids are spending money on aesthetic treatments right now. They're doing things preventatively that we did not have access to. Technology wasn't even like that then. So, as opposed to like maybe there was a time that 44 was the average time to start getting a facelift, that still seems very, very young. Um, but now we're doing things like lasers and um, and peels and all of these things to kind of prevent or at least pause the aging process just a little bit. There is so much emphasis put on especially women and primarily women about looks. I mean even last year when we first went on the air with the new season and there were just so many endless articles about aging and aging gracefully and Sarah Jessica's hair is gray and I was like first of all it's not but who cares I'm sitting next to Andy Cohen whose head is covered in gray hair and you've not mentioned that 
at all. The some models, Naomi Campbell, looking better than ever, and then other models, they let it go. But typically when people make their money, they just let it go and stop caring and get fat. Also, just when you're in your 30s and your 40s, you typically are more in tune with your body and you know yourself, so you don't care as much. So people who are older telling you like, well, don't don't think about your body too much. Don't don't care too much. Girl, it's because they've made their money and they don't got to care no more. When you've made enough money to alienate yourself from the world in a mansion, girl, I'd be eating lovely too. I'd be fluffing up a little bit too, but no. I have to be in the real world and looks matter when you're climbing the ladder. All ex-fatties have a fear of getting fat again and partially it's this fear that keeps them fixated on diet and exercise. Think about that one guy you see religiously at the gym, doesn't miss a beat, he lives, breathes, and dies at that gym. Yeah, he's an ex-fatty. I guarantee you. And if he wasn't an ex-fat person, he's just overcompensating for other areas where he lacks. So I'm here to tell you, fear of fat only attracts you becoming a fat ass. You place all this attention on not being fat, on weight loss. You are obsessed. You're obsessed with losing, but you're watching this video right now. You're obsessed, okay? And all that attention on losing weight just becomes your dominant intention and as we know, per the secret, your dominant intention is what you attract. Being afraid of something is gonna attract it more to you because that's literally what you're doing by fixating on diet and exercise so much. So I don't ever think about being skinny. I don't ever necessarily think about, oh, I've gotta be skinny, I've got To me, that's kind of an unhealthy mindset. And most skinny people aren't thinking about being skinny 24 seven, at least the healthy ones anyway. That's something to know. Most skinny people are just skinny because of their habits. Okay, so by incorporating skinny habits as your new normal, you will never really look bad. You bloated someone else on a skinny day. So it really is all about your mental relationship with food. What vibrations are you putting in the food before you eat it? Because if you really think about it, some people eat so much and they still maintain their bodies. They still have their dream bodies. It's almost like the food doesn't affect them the way it affects the rest of us. And it has to do with the story they tell themselves around food. So I know it sounds crazy, but if you tell yourself that everything you eat makes your metabolism faster and you keep brainwashing yourself, what kind of reality do you think you're going to create for yourself? So there's some people that literally curse themselves. They cross themselves by the words they speak over their food and their body. This is where prayer originates. Let's pray for our food. Let's pray it doesn't kill us and take us out. So this is also important. What the hell are you saying before you eat your food? How do you view food? If you're someone who regularly goes to the gym, it's inevitable that you're gonna have burnout at some point. Even the people who make physicality and fitness their jobs, they get tired of the gym. Let's be real here. Who wants to be on a hamster wheel all the time? Not me. So something I often tell myself is do the best you can and what you've done is good enough because that takes the focus off perfectionism. It's accepting your body for what it can do. So sometimes you're gonna work out for 30 minutes. Some days you only got 15 in you and that's okay. i rather you do that and do what your body can versus overexerting yourself, pushing yourself to do an hour to two hours a day, which works up the appetite and has you binge eating later, low key. The more you exert yourself, the quicker for you to burn out. So you're gonna have to be trying new exercises. As soon as you get tired of the gym, now it's time for a soul cycle class. You need to be exercising different muscles all the time, revamping the workouts. It's kind of like decorating a space after living in it for a long time. You redecorate and it feels like a whole brand new place. So it's the same thing with working out. You really never stop to think about it, but sometimes it's psychological as to why you can't lose the weight. 
sometimes the body holds on to excess weight in efforts to protect you are you ready for what comes with having your dream body can you handle that so sometimes we sabotage ourselves because maybe if we actually get our dream bodies and we might realize that having your dream body doesn't solve all of your life issues and then maybe you'll be forced to look at the real problem so you sabotage yourself you never lose the weight the body holds on to the excess fat in efforts to protect you and think about that did you yeah we do what we all do it to ourselves walking after a meal is the best thing you can do for your body body motion aids in digestion so and it also improves your sleep there's an abundance of amazing delicious foods out there and of course i enjoy them this is what life is about this is what living is so real time to go for a walk after eating a meal is 10 minutes so the sooner you get your ass up after eating, the sooner you won't be a fat ass no more. <laughs> These are the rules to being a skinny legend. It's about being self-aware, aware that you have urges, aware that you have cravings, aware that you are reaching for food to soothe yourself. A lot of people don't know how to self-soothe in any other way, so they're gonna reach for the chocolate bar, go to 7-Eleven, binge eat to, in attempts to make themselves feel better, but that's never gonna make you feel as good as you think in the moment. So you're gonna have to be asking yourself, how do I wanna feel after this meal? If I give in to this urge, will I feel good about myself? How will I feel if I don't give in to this urge? By acting in opposite of your emotion, you are creating new behavioral patterns. So we all have that one food we love, that one comfort food we love. It becomes a habit to reach for that during stressful times. And the more you do it, the more it's a habit that you can't break out of. So a lot of being mentally skinny is asking yourself these questions when these urges come up and realizing that urges pass. The longer you sit with your cravings, the longer you sit with your urges, yeah, it gets worse, it feels bad, you get a little anxiety, but eventually it passes. And it gives you a sense of accomplishment and your body feels better later on. I feel like it's really important to pay attention to how you wanna feel after you eat and pay attention to how you feel throughout the week. So for two to three days straight, I was eating rice. I incorporated the I love of rice. Oh my God, addiction. But um, I didn't feel the best the next day, physically, mentally, and a lot of your serotonin is made in your gut. So your gut bacteria really does affect your mental health. But I immediately knew like it was the rice and my face was like a lot more inflamed but pay attention to how you feel long-term. You can pretty much set yourself up for a good mood by planning to eat ahead. So you'll be 95% more successful on your diet if you meal prep on a Sunday. If you go in with that intention, because there's so much that happens working and doing all these things, you're not gonna wanna be cooking all the time. And it's in those moments where you those moments are the most important ones. Are you gonna take the easy route and open the Uber Eats app? Or are you gonna make something that's gonna make you feel better later? A lot of us don't really have that willpower. So it's really all about your mental awareness. Identify your personal saboteurs. Where are you failing at? Where are you falling short? Always tell yourself you don't have to eat the whole thing and future you is gonna be really happy that you didn't eat the whole thing because you got a snack for later. Now you're feeling a little peckish. Oh, wait, what have I got in the fridge? You're doing future you a favor. Oh, we live in a society that encourages us to consume in excess. So it's a mental trick almost with any food industry or organization, a bigger plate. We fill up the plate, it signals to us mentally that we have to eat everything on the plate, but you really don't. You have way more self-control and discipline if you're able to eat off a big plate and leave food on there. Not asking for the doggy bag, I know 
Seems you you're paid your good money for your meal and you're gonna have every drop. We get it, badass. Not getting the doggy bag. This is gonna encourage you to feel different, but also act differently next time. It's all about structuring yourself and creating behaviors that almost become autopilot. That's how you become mentally skinny and that's what you need to be more than anything. You can lose the weight, we've all lost the weight and gained it back have we not yeah we have so the, you have to become mentally skinny you can't be relying on drugs or ozempic or i mean a gastric sleeve actually works it's a good one but you can't be relying on temporary appetite suppressants to maintain your skinny if you feel like feeling full is your goal which it shouldn't be it should be feeling satisfied but I get you I like to feel full too um fill up fill up with our fluids and stuff and you need to also make sure that you are not simultaneously eating and drinking at the same time because that's really hard on your digestion so if you're eating you should just be eating I know you want to wash it down yeah get that but it's really hard on your digestion so It'll be much easier for you. Practice mindful eating. Chew that shit. I know y'all be <laughs> like the vacuum cleaner, scarfing that shit down. But how about we mindfully eat and just really enjoy the experience? Cause literally in a minute, not even a minute, you take so long to prepare your food and like how long to devour it? Not that long. And then you're sitting there and you're like, oh my God, I want more. I'm hungry. <laughs> That just leads to overeating. So you got to practice mindful eating and mindfulness and awareness. It's going to be pretty inevitable that you at some point are overeating, but you're not moving your body. It's a normal facet of life. Sometimes it rains, it snows, the weather's horrible. Like in New York, oh my God, during winter, you can't go for a walk and then you're trapped in those little small apartments. And though it's going to be inevitable that you find yourself in a situation where you're overeating and not moving your body. And that could lead to weight gain. Yes, it's a recipe for weight gain. You've got to rationalize with yourself and pivot. So if you find yourself in this situation, ideally, you shouldn't be eating that much. You can skip the workouts, but don't skip the walks. Walks are not for exercise. The walks are for your mental health. You need time to think. It's been a long day and it's time to unwind or just not think. Literally, put on music, put on calming music that allows you to hear your own thoughts or hear no thoughts. So I never look at a walk as exercise, truly. I just look at it as I need some time to think. So don't skip the walks. You don't gotta be going every day, but you're gonna be a fat ass if you don't, so don't be skipping the walks. Another really important thing to note is under eating gives you the same mental turmoil that overeating does. And under eating can be just as bad for you as overeating. So that's why it's important to really eat for how you wanna feel and have awareness. You don't wanna be one of those girls who develops an ED the goal is essentially to have a healthy relationship with food. That is ultimately the goal. Eating disorders, over-exercising, under-eating, all these unsustainable ways to maintain your body, they don't necessarily give you the most mental relief. Restrictive eating is really also not the answer because that eventually leads to binging. It's different if you're going into restrictive eating with a goal. So it's like, I've got a red carpet to be cute for. Let me dial the calories down. But if you understand that's just for the time being and it's not something you can sustain for the rest of your life, unless you got a gastric sleeve, then it's fine. A lot of us have food addictions, like me on the low scale, on the very, very low scale. 
doing this content making these videos i'm like wow i am actually quite disciplined more disciplined than i give myself credit for but a lot of us have food addictions and food obsessions and you need to give yourself a little bit of grace with that because food and sugar is so addicting the food is designed to be addicting with all the additives it's like dasani they put Dasani in airports because of the chemicals in the water. It's thought to make you more thirstier so that you might buy another bottle or the popcorn at the movie theater. Let's salt that shit up so you buy more. You get ravenous. It's all about capitalism, really. So you got to give yourself grace. Food is addicting because it's designed to be. We're eating in a short period of time is not going to ruin the months of progress and results that you work so hard for. I know it seems like such a stressful, serious decision when you're holding that donut in your hands, you're holding that pizza in your hand, and you're just debating the calories, you're counting it up, you're, you're like, did I move my body that much today? I know it seems like a really, really, really big decision, but in the grand scheme of things, you eating that donut, you eating that Thai food, it's not gonna make a difference in the grand scheme of things. So don't stress yourself out with that. You gotta overeat for a long period of time with no exercise to really pack the fat on. Water should be mainly the thing you're drinking no soda i mean i know that i do diet sodas because really there's not that much research done on diet coke i know there's aspartame in it but how many diet coke how many liters do we need before we get cancer so water should be the main thing that you're drinking i used to not drink diet coke because of the aspartame but my best friend like he's been drinking it for so long and his skin's beautiful so i figured let me just have some every now and then. But liquid calories, this is the max on a liquid calorie beverage I'm ever do. 10 calories, just because it's not worth it. Like I like to eat. I like to have room for my snacks and I don't wanna be feeling guilty about that. So water should be the main thing you're drinking. Your skin and your body will thank you. A lot of you guys get headaches. You don't feel too good. And you don't realize it's because you're not hydrated. You're not drinking enough water. Your heart's beating. You can feel your heart beating. You're like, I got anxiety. No, bitch, drink some water. So when I mean no liquid calories, I mean no unhealthy sugary processed liquid calories. That's not counting celery. This is not counting protein shakes. Recently, I've been eating like a bariatric person and like kind of keto vibes really. Been doing wonders for my body with limited exercise. So if you're an intermittent faster, when you wake up, I know I'm not necessarily the most hungry in the morning, so I don't want to eat. Get you a protein shake that has all your vitamins and minerals because muscle tone is sexy. You need to be getting your protein. So the way you decenter food from being the number one focus in your life is by creating a hobbies that give you a sense of accomplishment. So for me, I am doll designing. I do my own nail. I've acquired many skills. Um, did I get, oh, I finally learned how to bake bread this year, which I don't do that often because we're not eating all them carbs, but it's nice to know how to bake it. And it's nice to know how to tweak things to your own personal diet. There's another rule too. I feel like Pretty much 95% of delivery food more specifically there's all these hidden calories and it's made in large quantities so they're just like putting the sugar and the salt so nine times out of ten cooking your own food is going to be better for your body because you know what you're putting in it you don't know what people are putting in your food nine times out of ten you're going to be inflamed and bloated as hell the next morning after eating unhealthy uber eats so. here with your faves sugar and spice how exciting where the diet coke girl is, the diet coke is there girl stuff in is. there yeah can Do i have like, some yeah, yes i need some, of course, have some. thank <laughs> you let's get sugar i'm in my zen mode y'all i'm getting back on. to life <laughs> <laughs> okay so i feel like a lot of people watching don't necessarily have the experience of being publicly perceived by millions of people i feel like when you're a public figure 
when you make your money off and on camera, there's a lot of personal magnetism that goes into that. So because we're like nodding our heads, we're like, <laughs> <laughs> we're like the two brains outside. Yeah. But. How do you guys both navigate dealing with societal pressures of having to maintain a certain body look? Because you two mm. were both on Drag Race. Mm -hmm. If you guys yes. didn't know, yes. they are the most <laughs> memorable <laughs> contestants. We'll say that. Uh, coming from Carmelita. Oh, okay, we're going there today. Okay. Yeah, and I feel like that's such a toxic fandom. I remember right. watching the first couple of episodes and the first thing that came out of their mouth were your body sizes. Oh, like, uh, wow. Well, oh, you noticed that? Yeah, I did notice that. Wow. Well. <laughs> not notice them. Like you felt like they were like, commenting on our bodies right away. Yeah, right away, right away. And I feel yeah. like that's yeah. a, right. a relatable experience when you're on the thinner side, so to speak. Yeah. You feel like you'd be as successful in the public eye if you were a larger body size. I know for a fact that me and Sugar would not be as successful as we right. are if we were a different body type, if we were bigger, if we were whatever, whatever it was. But also, I feel like we knew that. I know how society works. I'm not gonna delude myself on how society works. The Drag Race fandom, or just is like a what we were saying, is like a microcosm. What is the world? Was that world? Yeah, it's a, big a microcosm. Right. Of the world. It's so a microcosm it's like, of the world. Even yeah. though you watching, you might be like, oh, these are like drag queens. Like, what are they doing here? No, this is an example of what happens in the right. real world. Right. right. No, and like a lot now, of on a public stage, you've got the big girls coming for the small girls. Like we see that every day. And with the Drag Race fans, they always give queens, like plus size queens, a harder time. Like we're yes. not really a harder time. I think like it's more so just ignorance. Do you know what I mean? Like people get hate. Like every queen will get hate regardless. But I feel like especially with plus size queens, like people talk about the hate and they get the hate. But I feel like no one talks about how it's more so. They just almost disregard them. But yeah. it happens on every show, on Housewives, on, on The Bachelor too, America's Next Top Model. on America's Next Top Model. Yeah, so on America's Next Top Model, The Bachelor, any plus size contestant, they're always kind of treated more as like a to even on any- Like they're never gonna let the fat girl win. No, and on America's Next Top Model, pretty much they were using them almost as like a way to like, show this model. is the other side of modeling, but also like they're down here, they can't do high fashion, da 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 da. Yeah. Like, but I feel like that was a good thing about Tyra though. She did try to like really show that like beauty was for everyone. And I'm sure it was the 2000s. I mean, everyone was sick then. But I think Tyra did do her best to showcase other types of beauty. No, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. At what point in your career did you realize that I've got to look a certain way? Like, cause I feel like knowing right. you two, you take yourself out of it. You both have two big, beautiful closets. I <laughs> shop at all the time. Second closet, baby. I mean, I will say, if I'm wearing pink, I'll probably look like Sugar's closet. If you wanna look better. If I'm wearing black, probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're actually kind of giving like, yeah. we're giving the twins yeah. right now, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Miss Carmelita's over on the on the spicy side mm -hmm. tonight. No, yeah. I am. Mm -hmm. We're feeling what you do. I mean, ooh. So, Concocting a smell. Sugar, you're always on your long walks. You're always on your hot girl walks. Yeah. I know you're very health conscious. Yes. So how do you stay mentally skinny? Well, I think I learned I had to get mentally skinny years ago because that's when the societal standards of women like hit me hard. I was like, oh, like now all of a sudden I'm caring about like, are my legs too thin? Are they too big? Before, like I was a guy, I was wearing my big cargo shorts. It didn't matter. Those weren't seeing the light of day. All of a sudden I was like, oh. The irony, it took me to wear a mini skirt to start like working out my legs. But I was like, oh, my calves are gonna be exposed. Let me start doing my squats. What kind of shorts? How long were your shorts that you were wearing? <laughs> How long were these damn shorts is what we need to know. I think they were capris. <laughs> um, my biggest insecurities, I remember um, being in high school and my mom's uncles, bless their hearts, I mean, if they have any left, who knows? Uh, they would literally like punch me like at the parties and go, "Hey you, why are you eating more?" And I'd be like, "Huh? Why are you eating more?" Oh yeah, God. that the like, Italian accent. accent. And then I'm like, "What?" Like, cause I was just like a, a stick thin little like 
dust of nothing, hoping for a prayer right, to continue uh, no, on. No, you're right. Growing up, it was. Um, I feel like if you're growing up as a little boy, if you're like thin, that's almost like bad. It was like if you're thin, enough. you're not getting in. That's you're not how it was. Up or something. Definitely higher like, standards of women. When now. you guys it's, look yeah. like this, you are subject to female beauty standards. Right. Like. Yeah, I mean, exactly. and, the, uh, and like yeah. the stigmas that come with exactly. some of that. Exactly. I personally feel like you wouldn't be as spiral and successful if you weren't good at your art. No, well, of course. Of, Honestly, of course. I think like we were talking about this the other day. It's like people like a drag is like an oddity or a like clownery or right. like buffoonery. Right. Well, I think yeah. that was to our benefit in the beginning. Our makeup wasn't as good. Our drag wasn't as good. We were just starting out. So that's why we were going viral was because it was more the oddity. Oh, what's that? Because we visibly looked like men in wigs. And then we started going viral when our drag got better as well because it was more of the what the fuck factor. It was the, oh, that chick's a dude. Whoa, I wouldn't have right. known. So, so, but also to our advantage, we learned how to hide our masculine bodies more because we are thinner, but we also are like more toned and like athletic looking. So it's like, even in Geesh, it's like, I know to cover the arms and certain things and have the big hair to cover the manly shoulders. But so, you know, it's, it's, it's math, I guess, science. I think this dilemma of like insecurities in and out of drag is the perfect example that insecurities are always perspective and point of view because what if I never did drag? I would never have insecurities that like, oh my god, my shoulders are like too big or like, you know, it's like that would never, I wouldn't have to deal with that because as a guy I'd be like, my shoulders need to be bigger. But I'm trying to have the best of both worlds. So how can I do? I, how can you be a versatile chameleon? It's like I could wake up tomorrow and be like, you know what? I'm gonna be in drag every day. So then, insecurities I have would be. It's just so weird. Yeah. No. This is another level of most people don't have to think. Right. About. You become hypercritical. Yeah, so I think it goes yeah. to the fact that with uh, women's beauty standards, there is more. At the end of the day, it's almost like there is more pressure, I think. Yeah. If you're presenting feminine or just giving that energy or trying to channel that, there's more pressure. There's more. There's almost more media surrounding it too. Because I feel like growing up, I feel like in media, it was always looked at weird if like guys had like an eating disorder or something. They, they would make it more like... Right, like, men mean, like, didn't they, have like, um, body issues. issues or something like so, that. So like it's also toxic in that way, where it's like less talked about. Wow. Well, yeah, and it, of course they're gonna, you know, I mean, women against each man. other and gay make a different world. It's really all about perspective. Most people have been taught to hate things that are normal about themselves sort of because of media. So it's like if you lived on a private island alone you wouldn't necessarily have a desire to get a BBL because who's seeing you? The beauty industry is famous for doing this. They will prey on women's flaws and they'll exaggerate your perceived flaws because if you don't like things about yourself, if you didn't hate things about yourself, how are they going to make money? So it's like, do you really hate your hip dips or have you been taught to hate your hip dips because you've been scrolling Instagram for hours? Thing. It's one thing if the fat on your body is making your physical experience alive uncomfortable, you struggle to get out of bed, you could barely get down a flight of steps. Okay, that's reasonable. But things like hip dips or that little pouch of fat that's there to protect your baby when you get pregnant, you know, that's normal. These are normal things that people are being taught to hate. And the thing is, you don't necessarily hate yourself. We all chose our bodies for a reason. We all chose to incarnate in our bodies for a reason. We chose our birth name, and your birth name is linked to your life purpose. So look up your birth name's etymology. Some of us chose bodies that are not conventionally attractive on planet Earth so that we will learn the lessons of beautifying ourselves so we can embark on the journey of cultivating self-esteem and self-love. 
the people who aren't born beautiful and were ambitious enough to become beautiful are the ones who appreciate their bodies in a way that someone who was always given that would never. Some of us deliberately choose lifestyles of poverty so we could prove to ourselves that we are prosperous and we can do this. Earth is like a school if you really think about it. All these lessons, blah, blah. It'd be too easy if you just came in rich and pretty. There'd be no contrast for you to thrive. So you don't necessarily hate your body or hate yourself. You've just been taught to. It's like when babies grow up, they're innocent, they're pure, they're just being, and then parents put all these restrictions and standards on them. You can't do this, you can't do that. So this is something to really realize. And this is why you have to know yourself because so many people will try to tell you who you are. So many people will try to tell me who I am. I feel like it's another microcosm of the world where it's like more exaggerated because of egos and beauty standards. We're saying like your body and your face is your ticket in these spaces, but that also translates to culture. Like right. in New York or LA, it's an unspoken rule. You gotta look a certain way if you wanna thrive. So Well do you think in New York you have do you oh, think in New yeah. York you have to be skinny? You know I feel like LA is more fat phobic of a place, absolutely for sure. It's more unspoken in Manhattan, but LA it's very pushed. Right. Like the fat phobia is kind of push conversations you overhear like every conversation you walk by is I gotta lose fifty pounds. I I look so fat, these two me and girl, I'm on my diet, so, you know, it's very normalized. Well, also, that's kind of even with, like, the whole Ozempi thing, like, it's, like, almost, like, like a culture. the minute someone loses weight, the people are screaming, Ozempi with their Ozempi torches, and I'm just like, girl, I like, thought it was Empic. Sometimes people the just, girls. like... Get fit. I think it's so fascinating how much people pay attention to your body. From little right. changes, like people know. Dude, look at tabs. Yeah, yeah, literally. The tabs are open. The LA or the public eye? Just in general. Like, TikTok, they're really big like, on bodies. I watching, yeah, I They're really watching, like, yeah. They're, they're like, they're no, like someone will like walk past the mirror and they're like, oh my god, she was doing a body check. And I'm like, what the hell's a body check? And then it's like, oh, the yeah. girl's like checking their head. I'm like, what? No, it's so true. Like, particularly online, like I noticed for me, and like when one of my videos, the most replayed part was the part where I was standing up and showing my body. So it's Interesting. Like, oh. I knew that you had to do TikTok and do YouTube, but it's because you would tell me these things and I knew that you would read all these books and you had all this knowledge and I'm like people have to hear your wisdom and your knowledge yeah, like if you don't you have to have a platform people should be hearing what I'm hearing like, you say from what you guys watched I'm obviously a woman with a wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. but you notice what I'm going viral for the more superficial right. things oh. the more superficial aspects of society this is what yeah. I'm saying it's really you, you didn't do I didn't tell you to do videos you, know, like, you have to make videos about telling people how to do skinny like, I was like no you're just someone that's ready to talent and knowledgeable yeah. but this is what popped off so it's like you have to go where that goes you like into it you can't keep sure. doing videos if no one cares like literally right so <laughs> that's how it works i mean literally right. you were trying to get that bag baby literally yeah <laughs> yes. and the bag she got while they were running their mouths online she was running to the bed how do you deal with friendships that force you into fat habits Oh, i mean just be anti-social like me i just like see the girls everyone like See the girls at the pregame, like nobody's eating at the pregame, you know? <laughs> I feel like I'm so but, like, picky. I, it's very hard for someone to have like food habits rub off on me. I think I'm a very disciplined person, so no, eat, eat all the way. Eat nothing, eat everything, eat a damn octopus in front of me. I'm not going to eat it. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be tempting me, so I'm not really peer pressured now. Period. <laughs> yes. Okay, how do you both decenter food from being the number one focus of your life? Because that's, that's something that a lot of people struggle yes. with. Food is their enjoyment. It's their. It's the best part of their day. Right. I mean, so ooh, how that's do you dark. like? Because yeah. that's the thing about being in the public eye, right. being a public figure. Body is under microscope, so yeah, you right. have to be cognizant of these things. I always tell myself the happiest and best moments of my life were spent when I wasn't eating and I wasn't on my phone. Yeah. So like I strive to, like for those moments. So like I just try, I try to think of food like sunscreen. 
It's like, oh, I gotta use it so I don't get, you know, burned by the sun, you know? Yeah. But like, yeah. you don't wanna be like, oh, I can't wait to go home and eat my sunscreen. It's like, <laughs> no. no. But this is something I literally s still struggle with. Like there are days, like it's just old habits die hard. It's like, did you know mom's gonna like eat all day and live my best? And you know, that's not gonna feel good. It's gonna make me feel like a miserable F. So like, you know, get it together. But it's hard. Go through my arrows, I don't know. That's something that I've always struggled with, but recently I feel like it's the video you made about it, to me, that was like my cheat code was having hobbies, having interests, doing other things, literally just have your mind focus on other things other than food, 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 because then you're not even thinking about it. And then you're like, oh, okay, well now I want to eat because I'm, it's been all day, but oh, I'm hungry. I should fuel myself and I'm going to have an amazing meal and enjoy myself. Oh, oh, now I'm full. Okay, now I can go back to doing what I love. Food's not on my mind. I can work out. I can do what I want. And then you live a more balanced life because I remember when quarantine happened and all day I was thinking about, ooh, like what am I gonna eat? What am I gonna make? We would even get into drag. We even had a joke that if you saw us in a sickening look, just know, like online, uh, just know that I ate good after. Tactic was um, I would eat good. Motivating. And then I would motivate my eat good after. I had the pasta, all that. I would always reward myself. But I think, I mean, that I think that actually was a good tactic. Motivate myself and I'd be like, oh, okay. In a couple days after I filmed that video, I'm gonna have the biggest cheat day, I'm gonna have the pasta, I'm gonna like let myself have it all. Cause then when I would let myself just gorge in and like pop off, normally the next day I'd be so disgusted with myself and feel bad. I'd be like, oh wait, no, like I shouldn't be eating to make myself sick. I should be eating to make myself feel good. So then that's kind of when it changes and you're like, oh wait, no, I'm eating for how I feel. I feel like so many people fall into that cycle of like, well, I'm doing so good, well, I have to binge an enormous amount to a point because I'm not going to be eating like this for the rest of the week. Yeah. It's either all or nothing. What's your best diet advice? Remember, you're always going to wake up tomorrow. Hopefully. So, do you really want to be doing this every day of your life? Do you really want to be living in hell? Basically, you are literally putting yourself in hell over food. And once you realize your life will actually get absorbably amount, if that's a word, Google me, better. If you do drop those five to 10 pounds that feel uncomfortable. If you do lose the weight, and are able to walk into a room and feel good and not have to beg for validation from others and seek for your own self-acceptance through the eyes of other people. And you can walk in and not give a flying F. Who even is looking at you or glances at you because you know you're that girl. And I know that's like annoying, like everyone's like, I'm that girl, but no, just stop. I'm saying this because I need to listen to this too. Because I wake up and it's like, what am I gonna eat? And it's like, no, how am I gonna be happy? And eating, well, no, eat when you're hungry so you survive. Yeah. Girl, I could be going on for hours. <laughs> it's better just to have a little, like, tiny, not a full yeah, cheat no, just, even, like, treat I yourself like, when you want to. I feel like even Like, that. we're gonna have a donut tonight, like, yeah. yeah. For sure. <laughs> but, like, but, um, honestly, basically, I've been wait, in and out because so, of wait, my I hair. Like I was, this is at the end of the movie, and, like, you were like, but do you want to change your life? And I was like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, you're, like, this wise person that comes in, and we're all, like, transfixed, and then it's like, wow, that was really good. Well, I'm happy I got a word out. Um, um, you know, I, I got about two brain cells left because the wig is gone. I think it just comes down to literally asking yourself the question, do I want to look a certain way? Do I want to be skinny? Do I want to have my desired body? more than I want to enjoy eating temporary foods that make me feel happy because I'm chasing some sort of high. Do you know what I mean? And for me, it was always, oh no, I want to look a certain way. But also, I've always, 
Actually, even before I was in the public eye, I was a very disciplined person. I, like, I knew my body type was something I was in control of. So I was like, okay, well, let's go with that. Let's make this cute. Because I was very insecure about my face and my person and just everything. More so just because I'm an artist. I'm a perfectionist. And I have my art and my doll, my character of Spice, she looks a certain way in my mind. Because that's what I like and that's what I'm like drawn to. And, and like lights my soul on fire. So for me, it's like I feel like I have to hold myself to that standard. Your body's your vehicle. I, my body's my vehicle. My body's my canvas because I'm a drag queen. I'm also a very artistically fulfilled person. I'm happy depending on how I'm content with my art. And so my art is my drag. And so if I'm not looking a certain way or feeling like I'm holding up like my end of like my like vision as an artist, then like I'll be feeling low. So basically like, yeah, my mental health is very tied to my body image. Yeah, no, it's so true. I feel like a lot of people like to deny. I think most people things. are, right? Or do some people? Well, I was watching this video last night. It was up this girl who lost 40 pounds and she was talking about how it's like she almost didn't want to admit that she was getting treated better online and in person. When she lost. Because it made her feel uncomfortable. But that feel, is how the world works. Yeah, maybe. that's a lot like, of people's experience. That's very uncut. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> oh, I never answered my favorite skinny snack. Actually. Your favorite skinny snack. And then I want to hear yours because for me. Yeah, we have impeccable snack taste. Miss Carmelita, Carmelita has the best snack taste. Yes. Oh my God. Wait. Last night we were having. What are those little um? Those are my favorite. Those little white uh fluffy. Um, something I'm in, this is- Oh my god, I can like feel alive again. Yay, sugar's back! <laughs> At a 7-Eleven near you, the Simply brand, the white cheddar. I call them Diet Cheetos, they're so addicting. So we got that with the cashews and it was just like, yeah, you need a salty snack? Yeah. The 7-Eleven cashews and the mm -hmm. Diet Cheetos mm -hmm. from the Simply brand. It's like three ninety. Yeah. You know the, the whole bag. And like. you know what another skinny hack is? We shared that bag. Yeah, we shared. We shared the cashews and the, and we just switched it back and forth and it was just the best of both yeah. worlds. So <laughs> Get you a friend you can share your calories with. <laughs> <laughs>